In this video, I will discuss uh, the shortest path problem, um, which is one of the easiest um, problems in the class of so-called variational problems. And the shortest path problem is intuitively very easy to understand. So it, it is written as follows, given two points A and B in Rn, find the shortest path which connects A and B. Okay, so obviously you all know that and the shortest path is the straight line, but we still want to formulate this in terms of an optimization problem, uh, just for illustration. Okay, uh, so uh, now we have to define all these words in the problem, and we begin with the notion of a path. So let's write a path is a mapping Um, gamma, um, that's just the, the name for the mapping, and we take some some interval here zero, uh, between 0 and 1, for example, it doesn't really matter which numbers you write here, it's just that this interval is kind of a notion of time, and this is the space where the points I and B live, so that's our target space. and. Uh, we require that this path uh, should be absolutely continuous. And it doesn't really matter if, if you really know what this exactly means. The point is that uh, it ensures that and the first derivative of this uh, exists almost everywhere and if you uh, if you integrate over the first derivative then you get back uh, gamma so gamma is the 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 integral over the f over gamma dot the f the first derivative uh, with respect to gamma and we will need this because the first derivative um, will appear in uh, the optimization problem, namely when we define the word, sh word shortest, and by uh, this we have to do uh, via the length of a path. Okay, the length of a path gamma is given by and we give it a name L of gamma and this should be uh, like um, if you drive a car then the, uh, the car will measure the speed uh, in this in, in, in this instance gamma will give us where we are at, po at, at some point in this interval which uh, again is the time and gamma dot of t will be the first derivative of the place so it will be the uh, speed, the velocity. And now this is still a vector, so it is a speed vector that will also give us the direction, but we are not interested in the direction, so we take just take the length of this uh, speed vector and we integrate it from 0 to 1 and then we get um, the length by just uh, summing up um, at each point or integrating um, uh, what speed um, we, we have at, at, at one specific point. Okay, okay, now we have defined this, so we want to minimize the length of the path, and now we have to define what, what it means to connect A and B, and we can write this as the path gamma connects gamma zero, so the starting point, and gamma of 1, the endpoint. What does this look like? So you have so points A and B, and then you have certain paths in between them. So then you have gamma of 0 here, 
gamma of 1 here, you have gamma of 1 half, for example, gamma of 3 quarter, and so on. And why are we actually choosing absolutely continuous paths um, and not just differentiable paths? Um, so the reason is that um, these absolutely continuous paths can also be uh, can also have points where um, we just uh, we, we just turn. So this is also a path, and then so the the the, the this thing does not have to exist everywhere, but also almost almost everywhere. So we can yeah. We don't really have to have this the speed the the speed exactly at this point. We just have to integrate over over the speed in general. Okay, so uh, now we have this. So now let's formulate the optimization problem. So we want to minimize the length of gamma. This is we want to find the shortest path and. We can write this as the integral between uh, from zero to one to of gamma dot norm of uh, t uh, gamma dot of t norm dt, and we have some constraints, and the constraints are given by connecting a and b, and this is uh, here. So we have gamma of, of 0 should be a and gamma of 1 should be b. And our variable is um, um, gamma, which is not very convenient for a computer because that's infinite dimensional. Um, Um, yeah, this is an infinite dimensional problem. So it's a bit too large scale for our uh, means here. Uh, but still, we will see in, in the next video how to reformulate this or how to approximate this problem um, with finitely many variables so that actually a computer will solve it. Um, so uh, this is a large scale problem. Um, why is it convex? So for convexity, I have told you that we have to define um, kind of mixtures between, uh, between the, uh, the, uh, our points in the space. In our case, the points are paths. And how to define a mixture between paths? So let's take two paths like here. Um, in between, we have like gamma of one half, and the other path should be gamma prime. This is not a derivative; it's just gamma prime of one half. So gamma prime is a, is another path. Then we have gamma of one quarter. Here we have a, which is gamma of zero and gamma prime of zero. Here we have b, which is gamma of 1 and gamma prime of 1 and so on. And um, to form a yeah here yeah. yeah to form to form mixtures we take just uh, we take every point in time we form the mixtures here. And then we get our mixture path. So what we have to show is um, if we want to be sure that we have a convex optimization problem, we have to show that we have a convex optimization problem, uh, a convex objective function, sorry. Um, we will get to the formal definition later, so just I just give you the intuition here. So you have the you have two paths here, and you have the mixture in between. Um, so you can already see from this that the 
um, the mixture paths will be shorter than any of, of those two. And this is already a good sign. Um, but you can, we'll, we'll start, you will later easily see from this structure that this is a convex function. And these are convex constraint sets. So uh, we, the one constraint is the set of, uh, that gamma should uh, belong to the set of all paths which just start in A. Another constraint would be that gamma should belong to all paths which end in B. Uh, why is this convex? That's very easy to see. Um, because, for example, because if you have two paths uh, uh, which both start in A and you put, form the mixture, then you form, uh, then the mixture path will uh, will have the same starting and endpoint as those both of those two have. Um, that's rather easy to see. If you if you take the the mean between those two points, then this will still be A. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Now let's just comment how to how to screw up. Um, so, if you have an obstacle, or if you have, if you had an obstacle, let's let's just begin a new picture. If you have A and B, and if you if you imagine that you have an obstacle here, which you're not allowed to cross, um, then you can see that um, you can go to the left. You can go to the right, but if you form the mixture between those those two, then you get in trouble because this is a non uh, so because you're not allowed to cross the obstacle because this would uh, violate your con your constraints, and therefore this is a non-convex problem. Okay. Um, another um, another possibility uh, to have this non-convex would be to to find the um, the f for example, if you imagine this were like rays of of a rays of light, and you have some matter here which um, uh, which has a lower light speed, and you 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 would like to to find the shortest or the, the fastest path from A to B or if you have road system and you're, you have a swamp in between and you're, you're slower and then uh, it's, it's easier to, to drive around this or to, to lead your, your light or yeah light around this light probably makes less sense then uh, this would also um, uh, make the problem po probably non-convex um, because then you don't have this guarantee with that with a compromise uh, you you also get the compromise in, in objective function value okay and uh, another feature of of this problem in particular is uh, the problem will be non-differentiable Why is that? Uh, because we will see that that the norm is not differentiable. In zero. And one of the the big ob objective objectives of this course is to deal with potentially non differentiable problems. Okay, so in the next video, we are going to, to see how to uh, approximate this um, infinite dimensional problem with a finite dimensional problem, which retains these convexity properties. And uh, this is called discretization.